Welcome to the debut episode of Film Study. I'm Ethan from Chicago. In this series, we're going to take an in-depth look at why I lost three battles. Okay, so we're going to start off right at the start. This is the very first move of the very first battle. I forgot to start at the start, so we're going to skip the the uh, selection sequence for this one, unfortunately. We're right in there. Okay, Passimian. I wanted to take out the Meowstic, so I used a dark move on it. Um, and I always like to max the very start, so I like in this series to look at the, the myriad mistakes I made, basically. And you, audience, are more than welcome to politely, politely give suggestions on what I've done wrong here. Um, eventually, I will have victories to share here. Unfortunately, of the three episodes I recorded today, um, I, none of them gave me, none of these battles gave me an opportunity to, to talk about winning. So, now here we are. This would be a turning point if I still had a chance. But what you're about to, to see is that this, um, the Meowstic was the least of my worries. I got worried about Meowstic because I, I have one myself that I like to use. And it's up, it's a prankster, it's up to no good. But, um... Hold on, let me get my fan rotom off. Yeah, that's a hint. That's a hint. I get that without the team preview, this is a lot worse. I can tell you that on there they have a, a Venusaur. Oh, well you just saw it there. Yeah, the, the green toad thing. A Venusaur and another Pokemon. But really I realized when I saw the Venusaur, I was like, oh, so when they made my Pokemon water type, they were they had bad things in mind, like for instance, using grass types on my now water type Pokemon. And that was not nice. Here's Big Venusaur. Now, I need to make a thumbnail for this video. I gotta get this out really quickly. Um, Alright, so Max Guard. Uh, this will be a good one to, to use as a thumbnail. Just this guard right here. Okay, so they are pretty clearly stalling out the Passimian's attack, uh, or G-Max attack. And that's nice and all, but, well, you'll see. All right, so now I'm thinking well, first of all, I forget that the choice band prevents me from using a second move with, with our dear uh, Marpeko there. And when Torkoal comes out, I'm like, uh-oh. But then when I got dark, uh, the dark type move on him with the plus attack on the Venusaur, I thought I had a bit of hope. And I knew this was going to happen. I knew they were going to take out a Simeon first. The critical hit didn't mean anything. And then, yeah, I don't like that. So the idea is to think, what could I have done differently? Well, at the team preview, I should have s seen Torkoal, Torkoal and Venusaur. If someone has a Venusaur, I should plan around them using it, because it's a monster. It can use... 
it's got you know the wildfire kind of a or pledge attack thing um it can go faster with the sun up and yeah i didn't when i saw this i kind of looked at actually what i saw was the pukumuku and um Pinurchin that they had and I was like oh it's the goober gang my friend Quent has a goober gang with those two Pokemon but then I forgot to take it seriously and I forgot to look at Venusaur but even if I had taken it seriously I would have lost this one because my team is very weak to wa fire you know what else I should have done was bring the Palito that I trained about five hours earlier into this battle there's all kinds of things that I could have done better. Okay, here's here's Ice Q. And when Ice Q comes in into any battle, I still think there's a chance. Just because I love it so much. My thought is, if I can take out Torkoal, Venusaur doesn't have any spread moves. Maybe I can do something. Maybe. And I was gonna try to use Icicle Crash on the ice on the uh, on Venusaur. Then it protects. And this ends the game. Ice Q is asleep. I attack no one, and I know that Venusaur is going to use Sleeping Powder again. All they have to do is hit a few buttons, get a, uh, uh, what's it called? Spread, the spread move, spread fire move, and it's over. I'm kind of just uh, hanging around. Maybe if it missed that sleep powder, it might have. Uh, I might have been able to do something, but nope. Cobalion is asleep. Ice Q is asleep. Here's the heat wave. Heat wave. That's what it's called, and that's game. Too bad. I should have looked at their uh, trainer card. I'll remember that for the next time I do this. That I should look at the opponent's trainer card. Searching, searching. I'm going to make the subtitle on the thumbnail. Why did I lose? Maybe at some point I'll have to talk about why did I win? How did I win? But not today. All right, so what I'm looking at here is the Charizard and Dragapult. I think I'm good against the uh, the ice, the dark, and the steel because I have fighting, but I'm worried about those Charizards. But I guess it looks like I prepared for... I don't know why I started with the team I did. But as you'll see, I got lucky. It was a favorable matchup at the start. So we're going to get Obstagoon and Caesar against uh, Morpeko and Passimian, 
who I put in just at the start. I, I, I just love having them at the start. It's like I get this rush because they're so fast and or they're not really fast or powerful, but I, I just like them. Okay. I like them. Now I'm just going to go straight forward. Close combat on the Obstagoon who uses per its special protect thing. Uh oh. Caesar is going to use some kind of punch. And then more Peko, or Passimian, who has a choice scarf, is faster, uses the thing on the thing. And. Yay! Got um, some attack. Okay. Now, I'm thinking more Pekka must be faster, right? So I'll be able to take out Caesar and then Passimian will hopefully survive or something like that. But no, Caesar is faster. Caesar got an attack off. And while more Pekka was able to take out Caesar eventually, uh, I knew at this point Morpeko was getting close close combated tragically. And that's what happens, yeah. And I'm down to my final two Pokemon. Which is, by the way, not ideal at this point in the, of the match. You wanna have a few more. <laughs> um What emoji should I use for this thumbnail? How about the one with the thinking face? And then also a film, there's a film reel emoji. Okay, but so I brought out the only two Pokemon I could, so I can't explain why I brought them out. I had no other choice. Here is what I did. When in doubt, I go big Sylveon and just take out whoever I can. I, I, I'm shaking my head right now because I know that this was the wrong move, but I kind of got shook. I got shook by having lost, or by having, yeah, by having lost those two Pokemon at the start. I was not happy. And actually I'm gonna have, a cry, should I have a crying baby emoji? No, 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 there's no crying in sports. Unless you win the championship. So I have, I'm using Hyper Beam as Max Sylveon. Maximilian Sylveon. And then close combat on um, Mon the, the thing. What's it called again? Oh, the Mammoth. If I were recording live, I'd have a similar tone. <laughs> oh, here, a smiley glasses face. There you go. It's false advertising. I don't have any brain cells left, but. So at this point, yeah, um, I kind of knew, I had a feeling that I was going to get the weakness policy when I, when I saw the woolly mammoth go big, I figured, oh, this is, this is an insurance policy, a weakness policy mammoth. My friend Charon uses that all the time. So I thought, uh-oh. Once I saw it get big, I knew. I don't know what they were using here, what my opponent was using there, but... I mean, that was, uh... The... I don't know why they used that move, is what I'm trying to say. 
And now... That was a, a short one. That was a short one. And, um... Not a whole lot to analyze, it was just a butt whooping. I hope you like the jazz music. Okay, so here... I looked at Talonflame and Dustclops, and I thought, ah, so they're gonna do speed stuff, they're gonna try to control the speed, okay. I don't know which direction they're going in, but I would have guessed that they were gonna try to go faster, but I don't know if my team looks like a Trick Rudin team or not, but... Um, well, we're about to see. No, I know what they did. So to begin, I was kind of like, I hate Dustclops. I want to take Dustclops out no matter what. I know Lapras is not going to one hit KO anyone. I know it's going to use that stupid ice, uh, Aurora Veil move. Let's just, let's just get the stupid Dustclops. Deaded. Now. Everything so far is what you'd expect. There's the G Max bullshit, and I survive. I am only a bit, I only have a bit of a regret about using Hyper Beam on that Dustclops. No, I don't, I, I mean, look, it's Dustclops, I hate it, I hate it. But then, guess who comes out? Dracovish. And this is the first time since I've taken a hiatus that I've seen a Dracovish, and I'm like, uh-oh, I forgot how to counter this thing. And I didn't, you're about, to, you're about to see, I didn't need to say that, that I had nothing to counter it. You're going to see that I had nothing to counter it. You'll see. Now I've got the Hydro Max, and Sylveon going down was, I mean, even if I were able to get a quick attack off, if I had not used Hyper Beam, that wouldn't, actually that would have made a difference. Uh-oh, good thing I'm doing this. Oh boy, yeah, if I had used Quick Attack, I would have been able to knock out Dracovish with um, that ghost move. Uh-oh.
Um, so I'm about to, to fall asleep, so hope you enjoyed it. Uh, you can watch the rest. There's a camping thing. Uh, good night. <laughs>